I think it's fair to say 2022 hasn't been the best year so far for VR gaming. Let's look at what games have been released, what is coming and what we can expect going into 2023. Hitman 3 launched PC VR support in January. Unfortunately, the VR support is missing some basic features like room scale. I actually made a separate video highlighting these issues. It's still fun to be in those environments, but falls apart when you have to actually interact or do anything in the game. Zenith, The Last City also launched in January, which is an MMO. Probably the best VR MMO we have right now. I'm going to be honest, I don't really like MMOs, so I haven't played it, but it's very positive on Steam and has over 4 out of 5 stars on the Quest Store. Ultra Wings 2 released in February on Quest and April for PC. This is a more casual flying game that isn't just focused on combat, with various planes and challenges including flying through floating rings, landing on different runways, shooting balloons out of the sky, and can be played with your motion controls manipulating the switches and dials in the plane, as well as grabbing your virtual stick and throttle with your hands. And who doesn't like playing with your virtual stick? Fox Machina is a VR mech game that's been in early access on PC since 2018 and got a surprise full release and quest launch in March. It now has a full length single player campaign and multiplayer modes. Just like Ultra Wings, you use your motion controls to grab and manipulate the cock pit with your hands which works really great. Tentacular is a puzzle type game where you play as a large squid and using your squid arms have to grab and manipulate things. Sometimes you're building stuff, sometimes you're destroying stuff, and sometimes you're playing with your squid dig. I wanted to like this, but found it frustrating when you want to place an object on top of another, but ends up feeling like a chore because your massive squid arms make even simple stuff hard. I know that's the point, but it wasn't for me. This is available on PC and Quest. Republic VR released on PSVR, but is already available for PC and Quest, so it's now on all platforms. It's a third person kind of isometric game where you're a hacker seeing the world through security cameras but also have to control and help a girl to escape. I personally love these games that are more relaxed and I can play seated so I enjoyed this one but obviously some people only want to play VR games where they're in full control of the character with motion controls. If that's you then this game's probably not for you. Moss Book 2 released on PSVR in March and recently came to the Quest in July. I absolutely love the first game, although it was short and the sequel is getting good reviews. I'm just waiting for it to come to the PC before I buy and play it. If you don't know what it is, just like Republic, you control a character from an isometric viewpoint, but you're also able to reach out and manipulate the environment with your hands. If you want to see if these less traditional VR games are something you're interested in, then grab Moss because it's excellent. Shadowpoint, which was an Oculus exclusive with the launch of the Quest, released on PSVR in March. You can play it on PC as well, but it's only on the Oculus Store, so not on Steam. It might not be the best looking puzzle VR game, but if you like puzzle games, it's essential and my personal favourite VR puzzler. You have to use your hands to pick up and manipulate objects to create shadows, but it ends up being so much more than that, with puzzles that involve passing things to yourself through mirrors or mind-bending gravity areas. It's the best paced puzzle game I've ever played other than Portal 1 and 2, and it was the perfect difficulty for me personally. It's also a bargain at £15 or $20, and it's going to take you about 6 hours to complete. Green Hell got a VR port which released on Quest in April and PC in June. The Quest version is paired back with some content cut, but the PC VR version of the game is the full thing, but you do need a powerful gaming PC to really get the most out of this one. It's one of the most highly rated survival games in flat, and with mostly positive reviews on Steam for the VR version, it seems to be a great port with full of interactivity that's a must own for any survival gaming fan. We had two City Builder VR games, both are Quest only for now. You've got Cities VR, which is a port of City Skylines, which arrived in April, and you've got Little Cities, which is a more user friendly, casual City Builder released in May. Fract, a previously PSVR exclusive shooter, came to PC in May. I haven't actually picked this one up yet because it's very short, at around 2 hours and it's a bit pricey at £20 or $30, so I'll maybe grab it on a sale. It's got mixed reviews on Steam right now, and because I haven't played it myself, it's really hard for me to recommend whether it's good or not. Wanderer, a great looking VR puzzle game released in May for PC and PSVR. It's based around time travel, with you picking up fragments and using them with your watch to jump to different time periods and locations. I love this game for the first few hours, 
but it started to feel like moving through treacle after a while because the puzzles require you to use different objects that can be spread out across different time zones so making progress will consist of going backwards and forwards across different time zones trying to figure out what you need to do and what you need to use. It's almost too clever for its own good and I gave up on it on the end and never finished it. Obviously don't take my opinion as fact though because the game has very positive reviews on Steam, it looks good and it takes about 10 to 12 hours to finish. F122 released on PC with VR support. It's getting mixed reviews on Steam for various reasons. I've heard some people complain about blurry visuals, but I haven't tried it myself yet as I'm waiting for a sale to pick it up. I do have a craving for some more structured VR races though, with a single player career and progression, as most VR supported racing games are very serious with a focus more on multiplayer or just a general sandbox type situation. Lost Ember is a non-VR game that got a surprise VR support for PC in July. You control different animals from a third person perspective, having to find memories to move on to the next areas. It's not a bad game, but I found the game blurry unless you run anti-aliasing on low, and the camera was too close to the animals for me, making it hard to focus on the animal and where I'm going at the same time. Hopefully it gets a patch fixing a few little issues, but worth paying attention to. Mirage Kayak VR released in July for PC VR only. It's a beautiful, almost photorealistic kayak game with four locations from the Antarctica to the Nordic coastline. Each area has amazing attention to detail, with lots of things to find like orca whales, sea turtles or sharks swimming in the water. It also has several races against the clock in each location with bronze, silver and gold times to try and beat. It's a great game to relax and paddle around, showcase VR to new people or get a good workout. Finally we have a game that's just released, Red Matter 2. This is a sequel to the excellent VR puzzle game set on a moon on Saturn. It's getting good reviews and I personally can't wait to pick it up and play through it myself. If you look at those releases, it doesn't look too bad, but we haven't had any real bangers. But if you own a good gaming PC, there's actually lots for you to play because the VR modding community has been consistently throwing out incredible VR mods for non-VR games. This year alone, we've had Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake, Resident Evil 7 and 8, Deep Rock Galactic, Left 4 Dead 2, Firewatch, The Stanley Parable, and recently The Raft, all with motion control support. If you don't mind playing VR games with a gamepad or mouse and keyboard, you've got Wolfenstein The New Colossus, Elden Ring, Pray to the Gods, Cyberpunk 2077, and Final Fantasy VII Remake getting VR mods. We've also got more games and mods coming, still potentially this year. The games include Bone Labs, the sequel to Boneworks, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2, another sequel to one of the best VR games ever made, Hubris, a beautiful looking sci-fi adventure game you can play right now with a free demo on Steam, Undead Citadel which is a story driven melee focused adventure game, I actually got to try this in the recent Steam VR Fest and the combat felt solid and we do really need a good story driven melee game instead of all the sandbox stuff like Blade and Sorcery, Among Us VR, Peaky Blinders The King's Ransom, Ziggy's Cosmic Adventure, Samurai Slaughterhouse, Requisition VR which is a zombie survival game with some interesting crafting, Aspire 2, a sequel to the very average stealth VR title, hopefully they improve on the first game and give us something great. Ghostbusters VR also got revealed at the Quest Gaming Showcase, but I need to see some footage and actual gameplay of this one. I'm sure there are more games that I missed, so let me know in the comments. Mods coming to PC also include Half-Life 2 VR which gets a public beta in September, Neon White has a VR mod in the works by the same developers as Firewatch and Outer Wilds, and there's also an Unreal Engine VR framework in development which could potentially open up hundreds of Unreal Engine games playable in VR with basic support, but could also be used by other modders to add motion control support in the future. In short, we still have stuff to look forward to this year, but maybe other than Bone Labs and the new Walking Dead game, we're missing some really big releases like we've seen in the past like Half-Life Alex. So what about hardware? Well nothing new is released this year other than the Pico Neo 3 coming to Europe and the US, but already the Pico Neo 4 is on its way and is supposed to be competing directly with the Quest 2. It's a standalone headset like the Quest, owned by the same Chinese company that owned TikTok, so pretty much directly in competition with Meta. We're going to have to wait and see what it's like when it comes out, but competition is a good thing. Meta themselves revealed a more high-end headset codenamed the Project Cambria. 
They've openly said that it's going to be very expensive, and I imagine this is going to be well over $1,000. Exact specifications are still unknown. Lastly, we have the PSVR 2, which is the much needed update to the original PSVR headset. We actually know a lot about this one, as Sony are deep in their advertising campaign, although an early 2023 launch is likely rather than before the end of this year. Some of the highlights include 4K HDR screens, which will be a first for a consumer focused headset, built in haptics, which will simulate your girlfriend punching you in the head because you spent all your money on plastic hardware you strapped to your face, as well as brand new controllers, now with thumbsticks and inside out tracking so you don't need any external cameras this time. The controllers are going to have haptics which are similar to the base PS5 controllers, including the excellent adaptive triggers which can add resistance to simulate the feeling of pulling a bow back or kick to simulate recoil from shooting a gun. I can't wait to try these. In terms of the future of VR, I feel like we're in limbo right now. The high-end exclusives seem to have dried up from Meta, with the last big release being Resident Evil 4, which released October last year. We know that Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is getting a VR port, but I don't think that's going to be this year, as we still don't have any footage yet. Ubisoft announced that they were working on VR versions of Splinter Cell and Assassin's Creed back in 2019, but recently announced that Splinter Cell VR has been cancelled, which is a real shame because out of the two, that was the one I was most interested in and felt like it was a better fit for VR. We really don't know about anything else. They seem to be more focused on the metaverse, even renaming their entire company from Facebook to Meta and dropping the Oculus name, which I personally think was a mistake. Why spend all that time building up a brand and then just drop it. People still call it the Oculus, they don't even say the Quest. I bought a Quest 2 for Resident Evil 4 last year and it's been gathering dust for months so I ended up giving it to my brother. When it comes to gaming, the Quest 2 is seriously lacking as a standalone device and the best use for the Quest right now is to connect it to a PC and play PC VR games which it's great at and makes for a very affordable PC VR headset but with developers focus on the Quest the amount of VR games that are actually making use of the PC's power are very few and far between. This is where the PSVR 2 will come in next year. We know that Sony fund great games. Some of the best VR games are PSVR exclusive like Blood and Truth, Astro Bot, Wipeout Omega Collection etc. And they've already announced a big exclusive based on one of their big IPs. Horizon Call of the Mountain which will be a more linear action game rather than an open world with you playing as a different character, making your way up a mountain pass, fighting robot dinosaurs along the way. They've announced that Resident Evil 8 is getting full VR support with motion controls, the Resident Evil 4 remake is getting some sort of VR content, the Green Hell VR developers have said that the game will come to PSVR 2, and the Kayak VR game I mentioned earlier will be getting a PSVR 2 release. More games are going to get announced before launch, and I'm fully expecting Gran Turismo 7 to get VR support, and I think that they're going to be tapping into their massive franchises like God of War, maybe The Last of Us, and making some excellent standalone VR versions of these games. I think this will sell headsets and it's going to give developers an option to make more graphically intensive games and get good sales that can work on PSVR 2 and PC without having to gimp their entire vision and game direction just to make sure it can run on the Quest. Time will tell obviously, but as someone who only really cares about virtual reality for gaming, I'm putting my money on Sony delivering the games I want to play over Meta and I think 2023 will be an excellent year for VR and a new wave of higher end VR games will start to release. Let me know what you think about the state of VR and where it's going in the future in the comments.